battle with the Kraken did not go well. Our vessel was torn asunder, her crew killed, and we are now marooned on the shores of a distant land. I have my swords at my hips, my leather and chain on my back, and my companions at my sides. This is certain to be an interesting night. We see a small village on the horizon, and we'll make our way there. Perhaps we can find some food and shelter. As we approach, the sound of battle greets us. The village is under attack by brigands. Several of the villagers are maimed. Two are killed. But we arrive in time to fend them off. The guards usher us inside, and the sight is not a pretty one. A house on fire at the time of our arrival now lies in smoldering ruins. Did its occupants survive? I know not, but my hands will be full tonight either way. There is a gap in the wall. Was it caused by siege engines? Fire? Who can tell? The inn appears to have been recently repaired. The size and scale of the work is not reassuring. A hole seems to have been blown in the side of it. Bloodstains are apparent on the inside. What is this place? We are led to the Lord's Manor. A rather impressive structure for such a small town. We are admitted inside the Lord's audience chamber. The Lord is a relatively young man, and he is accompanied by his steward, a man perhaps twice his years. The Lord is eager at our arrival, his blood still pumping from the battle just before. He tells us that these brigands have been harassing the village off and on for the last year. A second group, seemingly unrelated to the first, comes at regular intervals and collects tribute, under pain of retribution. The steward advises us to leave. He says that the occupants of that inn room were also adventurers, just like us. And that not two days after their arrival, a fireball tore into the inn and killed them all. The advisor is right. It is not safe to remain. But we've nowhere else to go. And these villagers have no one else to turn to. The lord offers us lodging in his guest room. The room is ample, with sleeping quarters enough for all of us. We await daybreak. As the new day dawns, we make our way back outside to the servants' quarters. Last night's scene notwithstanding, it appears as though the village is relatively intact. Houses dot the landscape, a well, a few trees. There is a smithy on the side. Perhaps we can forge some weapons here, repair our own. There is also a market square. We can get provisions here, food, equipment. The supplies are not likely to be ample, but certainly they can satisfy our needs for the next few days. There is a farm on the other side, mostly hens, supposedly for food and eggs, and sheep for wool. We are told that one of the town's trades is cloth weaving, the other fishing. This large manor houses the main fisherman in the village. His name is Rufus Stonefield. He is one of the oldest inhabitants of the village, and came with the original party that founded it. His trade is fishing, but he has amassed a large sum of money over the years. According to the local lord, the fish that he gathers here sells for a very hefty sum in the cities up north. This has afforded him the use of a ship. This vessel ferries most of the village's products out of the village for money, and most of the imports into it. I am told that stone is one of the imports, as well as metal. There appear to be no natural sources nearby that the village can excavate. That is why the inn was repaired with wood and not brick. We make our way back inside.
This village is certain to be an interesting place to remain for the next few days. And I hope those brigands return. This way we can find out where they came from, and put the village's troubles to rest once and for all. <laughs>